before we start scripting, let's try to understand what force scanning is all about. So, uh, force scanning is the method of determining which ports on a network are open and could be receiving or sending data. Uh, it is basically a process for sending packets to a specific port on a host and analyzing responses to identify uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, force scanning is analogous to knocking on doors to see if someone is home. Uh, and then we have uh, when we uh, scan a, a fault, we obtain three possible responses. Often accepted, that means the computer responds and asks if there is anything it can do for us. And then uh, we might uh, get close, uh, not listening as a response, and that means the computer responds that this port is currently in use and unavailable at this time. And then we may have we may have a response as filtered, dropped, or blocked. Then that means the computer doesn't even bother to respond, and this might be due to, due to uh, many factors, among amongst which might be perhaps the, uh, that computer is behind a firewall. So a uh, firewall is blocking our 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 scan. So our scan uh, port scanning is not reaching out to that particular host computer. And then so uh, we have TCP flags. TCP flags are used in performing a port scan. So we need to understand what these TCP flags are. So and then we there is a mnemonic that is used in to help us. Uh, recall this uh, TCP plugs uh, the, the mnemonic goes by unskilled attackers pesta real security fox so we have the U stand for urgent flag and then the A stand for ac uh, acknowledgement flag and then we have the P in pesta stand for the push plug and then the R in real stand for reset flag and then the S and the security stand for sync flag, and then the F in the fox stand for the finish plug, the fin flag. So the sync flag is used as a synchronization flag, and it is used on the first step in establishing a three-way handshake between two host computers. Uh, only the first packet from both the sender and the receiver should have the the same flag set. And then we have the acknowledgement flag. The acknowledgement, acknowledgement flag is used to acknowledge the successful receipt of a packet. So uh, both ACK and sync flag. I use in the second step of the three-way handshake process to tell the sender that it received the initial packet. We shall get to know what this uh, TCP three-way handshake is when we come to TCP connect uh, scanning uh, port scanning technique. Then we have the fin flag. The fin flag means the finish flag, means there is no more data from the sender, and uh, it is used in the last packet sent uh, from the sender. Then the way the urgent flag is used to notify the receiver to process the urgent packet before processing all other packets. So any urgent flag, any packet that comes with urgent flag, then that packet is going to be processed before processing any other packet. Then the, uh, the receiver will be notified when all non urgent that data has been received. Then we have the push plug. The push plug is similar to the urgent flag and it tells the receiver to process the packet as they are received instead of buffering them. And then we have the reset plug. The reset plug gets sent from this receiver to the sender when a packet is sent to a particular house that was not uh, expecting it. So it will send the reset uh, plug. Then we have the other uh, types of TCP flags, which we are not in our mnemonic. We have the ECE flag. ECE uh, flag is responsible for indicating if the uh, peer is ECN, ECN capable. Uh, ECN stands for Explicit Congestion Notification. It is an extension to the internet protocol and to the uh, transmission control uh, protocol, the TCP IP. So uh, ACN allows end-to-end -end notification of network congestion without dropping packets. Then the congestion window reduce plug is used by the sending host to indicate it received a packet with the ECE flag set. Then the NS, which is the non sum plug, uh, which is still an experimental plug, is used to help protect against uh, accidental malicious uh, concealment of packet from the sender. Now we took at, we look at the uh, numer this, the numerical uh, equivalent of these uh, flags uh, the, for this combination of the sin and the arc flag. Then we combine the numerical equivalent of the sin and the arc flag to get the numerical value. So for the sin and the arc flag, uh, the sin have the numerical in decimal equivalent of two. And in this model, for the arc flag, we use this thing to represent the arc flag. So when we combine two plus this thing, we have 18. So 18 represents in this model, stand for this combination of the sin and the arc flag. Uh, while, while we, when we combine it to hexadecimal, then we have a combination of 2 plus 10, which we have, which is, uh, which will give us uh, 12. So 12 in hexadecimal represent uh, the sin, a combination of the sin and the AC, 
ACK flag, the ACK flag. I when we use abbreviation, uh, uh, when we use a later representation, we I use the initial uh, name uh, of this word to represent the combination of the sin and the ACK flag. We use SA, S for sin, and then A for the ACK flag, the ACK flag. So SA represent sin ACK flag. Then we have the set and the act flag. We have the decimal numerical equivalent, which is used in representing the reset and the act flag to be 20, and the hexadecimal uh, numerical equivalent to be 14. And when we want to represent them in letters, we use R and A. R for the reset, reset flag, and A for the ACK, the act flag, we have used RA. Then for the push and the act flag, we have PA. And for the pin, the push, and the urgent flag, we have F. Uh, PU that three combination of uh, three TCP flags. Then for the single urgent flag, we have a decimal equivalent of 32, and when we come back to hexadecimal, we have 20, and when we want to represent it in letters, we have U. So we are going to make use of all this in our when we start scripting our fourth scanner in this section.